In this video, we're going to talk about the Milne relation. What the Milne relation does is relate cross sections for interaction and photoionization interactions. So the general picture we have is a photon coming in with some energy and it interacts with a neutral atom. Here I've drawn a hydrogen atom with a proton and electron. And this causes an interaction that ends with an ionized atom and an electron that now moves off with energy one half mass of the electron v squared. And just to make sure that we're accounting for all the energy here, some of the energy that this photon contained went into the kinetic energy of this electron, but most of the energy went into chi, the ionization potential of this atom, which for something like hydrogen is 13.6 electron volts. So on this side of this interaction, we have what's called a bound-free transition. And we'll talk about the cross-section for interaction, sigma bf, which is generally a function of the frequency of the photon coming in here. And that's a nu for frequency over here. And on this side, we have a free bound transition. And there will be a cross-section for interaction there, sigma fb, which is the function of the velocity of the electrons. So this is a v here, velocity. And over on the left side, we have nu, which is frequency. And the Milne relation relates these two cross sections for interaction. That's the Milne relation. So a typical thing we do when we want to relate the cross sections of the forward and reverse transitions is to describe the rates of interaction on both sides of this equation, and then to assume something like thermal equilibrium to relate those two rates. So let's start with that. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle of the page here. And on one side, we'll talk about bound-free transition rates, which are photoionizations. And on the other side, we'll talk about free-bound transition rates, which are collisional recombinations. On the photoionization side, we're going to need to talk about how many neutral atoms are out there. So we'll, we'll introduce N0 as the number of neutral atoms. So now if we want to talk about the number of ionizations per volume per time, then in direct analog with the photo excitations, which we've discussed in earlier videos, that rate is just going to be the number density of neutrals times the Einstein B coefficient for the bound-free transition. And so this B here is an Einstein B times the integrated radiation field, J bar. And just to remind you, J bar is the spherically averaged radiation field, 1 over 4 pi, times the integral of the specific intensity coming in from all directions, times the line profile function, phi of nu, which encompasses the frequency dependence of the coupling of the photon to the electronic transition of this atom. We integrate that d nu, and we also are integrating this d omega over all solid angles. So j bar integrates over all the solid angles through which radiation are coming into this location, and then dividing out by the integrated solid angle 4 pi. And the other thing we're going to want to do here is to try to re-express this Einstein B coefficient in terms of a, a cross-section for interaction. Uh, a sigma bf, which we can then try to relate to the collisional recombination cross-section. So to do that, we'll remember that we had expressed the extinction coefficient of radiation as the number density of atoms times some effective cross-section, sigma bf. But in previous videos, we've also expressed alpha in terms of Einstein b's as the energy of your transition h nu over 4 pi, your Einstein b coefficient, b, bf, times the number density of atoms times the line profile function, phi of nu. So now canceling the number density of atoms on either side, we can express the Einstein b coefficient in terms of the collisional cross-section here. And when I substitute that into this expression for the number of ionizations per volume per time, and I also plug in for j bar, I get that the number of ionizations per volume per time 
is equal to n0 4 pi over h nu sigma bf times 1 over the line profile function times 1 over 4 pi i nu phi of nu is the number of ionizations per volume per time for some differential d nu and d phi that I now must integrate over to get all of the ionizations per volume per time. Now there's one little detail that I've glossed over here which I need to fix before we go ahead and do this out which is that when I used my Einstein B coefficient here from the bound to the free state I was counting the absorptions of photons but as we know from photo excitations we also need to account for the fact that we can have stimulated emission. Now stimulated emission for photoionization is a little funny. You can actually help an electron hit a proton by having a photon of the appropriate frequency sitting nearby. So when we accounted for stimulated emission in the photo excitation case, we replaced the strict absorption coefficient, which was our Einstein B12 times the number density of atoms in the one state. We replaced that with a factor that subtracted off the number density of atoms in the excited state times the reverse Einstein B coefficient for stimulated emission. And we also worked out that you could express the relationship be between B12 and B21 as the degeneracy factor of state 1 times B12 is equal to the degeneracy factor of state 2 times B21. And all this applies for photoionization which is good because we didn't want to introduce another Einstein B here for the free to bound state. We can just express this in terms of the Einstein B coefficient that we already introduced in analog to the photo excitation case where we could turn this into dividing out N1 and B12 out front we get that times 1 minus N2 over N1 B21 over B12, and we know B21 over B12 is just G2 over G1. So the correction factor you end up putting in here, you can see here, is a 1 minus the number density of atoms in the excited state over the number density of atoms in the ground state, G2 over G1. So this is the correction factor for stimulated emission that we need to put into our expression for photoionizations. So now the correction factor that we're going to put up here is an extra factor of 1 minus... Now we're talking about ionizations now, so now we need to talk about the number density of ionized atoms compared to the number density of neutral atoms. And we need to talk about the degeneracy of the ionized state versus the degeneracy of the neutral state. So that's the correction for stimulated emission. So that's the correction for stimulated emission for photoionization. And the last thing I'm going to do over here in our expression for the number of ionizations per volume per time is to just clean things up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and integrate over the solid angle because I'm going to assume isotropic emission where nothing in here depends on solid angle. So I'll just go ahead and do that integral which will give me another factor of 4 pi as I integrate over 4 pi steradians. And I can cancel this 4 pi with that 4 pi. But then I pick up, as I said, one more 4 pi from integrating over the solid angle. So I end up with the integral for n0, i nu, 4 pi sigma bf over h nu, d nu, times the correction for stimulated emission. Now let's look over at the collisional side. What we want now is the number of recombinations per volume per time. And for collisional interactions, which we've discussed in a previous video, we can express this as the number density of ionized atoms times the number density of electrons times the cross-section for interaction, which is our sigma FB, our cross-section for going from the free to bound state. And there's also dependence on the velocity that these electrons are moving at. The higher the velocity, the higher the rate of interaction is because you move through a larger column of atoms. And then you need to talk about how many electrons were at this velocity 
And then to get the total number of recombinations, we're going to have to integrate over all the electrons at all the velocities that they appear at. So here we have an expression for the number of recombinations per volume per time. Now on the other side, we had an expression for the number of ionizations per volume per time. And to relate the two cross sections, the sigma BF and sigma FB here, we would like to set the number of recombinations equal to the number of ionizations. So now we're going to assume thermal equilibrium. And I should say here, when I'm talking about thermal equilibrium, I'm just doing this so that I can relate the number of ionizations to the number of recombinations, so that I have an expression that relates the two cross sections. The result that we're going to get, the Milne relation, doesn't depend on thermal equilibrium. We just know that when we have thermal equilibrium, these rates need to work out, which means that the cross sections have to have a certain relationship such that this works out in thermal equilibrium. So even though we're assuming thermal equilibrium here as kind of a calibration point for relating our two cross sections, the result we're going to get, the Milne relation, does not depend on thermal equilibrium. So I can set the number of ionizations to the number of recombinations here. I'm going to assume one more thing, which is a pretty safe assumption if you're in thermal equilibrium, which is also detailed balance. So why do I assume detailed balance? Well, the nice thing about detailed balance is that rather than having to deal with the total integral number of recombinations equal to the total integral number of ionizations, I can relate any forward reaction to its reverse. And under detailed balance, they perfectly cancel. And as I said, detailed balance generally holds in thermal equilibrium. So this isn't a terrible assumption to make, but it certainly makes our lives a lot easier because I can drop all of these integral signs here. And I can say, at each frequency interval over here, the number of ionizations at that frequency interval needs to match the number of recombinations over some interval in velocity. So what we're saying here is if we have some spectrum of photons over here as a function of frequency, we can examine some interval in frequency over here and relate that to a distribution of electrons over here as a function of v, velocity. And for any pair of velocity intervals over here, and frequency intervals over here, we can examine the cross sections that relate the forward and reverse interactions. So under detailed balance, we can now write from the left side the number of ionizations per volume per time, n0, our i nu under thermal equilibrium becomes b nu, and this is the Planck function, and is not to be confused with our Einstein b coefficient up here, that's b nu, 4 pi, over h nu, sigma bf, d nu, times 1, minus the number density of ionized atoms over the number density neutral atoms, degeneracy of the neutral state over the degeneracy of the ionized state, and that is equal to n plus number density of electrons, cross section for collisions, sigma fb, times velocity, times the distribution of electrons versus velocity, dv. Now we can plug in a couple things. First, because we're in equilibrium, we can use the Boltzmann equation to say that n plus over n0 is equal to g plus over g0 e to the minus e the energy over kt. And this is going to be useful right here in getting rid of this. And for E, we're going to have to use our original picture that we have a photon with energy H nu, which is interacting with an atom, to give us, after the interaction, an energy that is the ionization potential plus the kinetic energy of the electron, which was 1 half MeV squared. And the other thing we can use is for f of v, the distribution of electrons versus velocity, we'll assume a Maxwellian distribution. So that f of v is the mass of the electron over 2 pi kt to the 3 halves times 4 pi v squared e to the minus 1 half mev squared over kt. We'll do that, and the last thing I want to plug in, of course, is the Planck function, b nu, which is 2 h nu cubed over c squared times 1 over 
e to the h nu over kt minus 1. And one other thing I should mention before I start plugging all these in is this energy over here, which we'd said was the ionization potential plus the kinetic energy of the electron on one side of the interaction. Well, that's, of course, by conservation of energy equal to the energy on the left side of the interaction, which was just h nu, the energy of the photon. So time to do a little algebra here. I'm going to take, I'm going to start with the right side of this equation here. I'll have n plus n0, n e. I'm going to divide over my n0, over n0. I have my sigma fb, and I'll divide over my sigma bf. Now I'm going to plug in for f. So I have me over 2 pi kt to the 3 halves times 4 pi v squared, which when I include this other velocity factor here becomes v cubed, e to the minus 1 half mev squared over kt. And then the last factor I need to deal with is this dv. And I'd also like to get rid of this d nu at the same time. Fortunately, there's a cute way to do this. We've used this trick before in previous videos. We take the derivative of both sides of this energy equation over here. Take a derivative, we get h d nu. Over here, we take a derivative with respect to velocity, and we get that we have mev dv. So dv over d nu is equal to h over mev. So taking dv here and dividing over d nu, we'll end up with an h over mev. And this whole thing is going to be equal on the other side of the equation. We were still left with the Planck function times a 4 pi over h nu. And then we need to put in our stimulated emission correction here, which was 1 minus so we had n plus over n0, where we can use g plus over g0, e to the minus energy over kt. Of course, you can see that our g pluses and g0s are going to cancel out. So happily, we lost all of our degeneracy factors here. And we're just left with a factor of e to the minus e over kt. And I have my choice of which energy I can plug in here. And I'll just go ahead and pick h nu. So this looks a little hairy, but I promise it's going to work out. We just need one more equation, and that's the Saha equation, which you'll remember says that n plus n e over n zero in thermal equilibrium is given by two pi m e k t over h squared to the three halves times two times the degeneracy of the ionized state, and this two comes from the degeneracy of the electron with two spin states over the degeneracy of the neutral state, e to the minus the ionization potential, chi, over kt. So this was the Saha equation relating the number density of ionized, ionized atoms and electrons to the number density of neutrals in thermal equilibrium. And of course, we can plug in the Saha equation right over here. We'll do that. And then we can also clean a little house here, and we end up with sigma fb over sigma bf. Now I'm going to plug in the Saha equation. 2 pi me kt h squared. Then I'll pull in the remains of our Maxwellian distribution over here. p squared. And because I'm running out of room, I'll go ahead and multiply this factor of h over me over to the other side here, where it becomes an me over h. So we get a 2, the h's cancel with this, and I get an me instead, nu squared over c squared. Pick up another h in the bottom over here, from this factor right here. And then I have a somewhat annoying factor of 1 minus e to the minus h nu over kt over e to the h nu over kt minus 1. Now time to clean house a little bit more. And then the last important thing to recognize is that when we multiply this exponential here times this exponential over here, we're going to add their exponents. So we're adding a negative chi 
to a negative one-half MeV squared. Now you can barely maybe see here at the top that before we had said that that our energy was equal to H nu on one side, the energy of the photon coming in, and that's also equal to, uh, to chi, the ionization potential, plus the kinetic energy of that electron, the one-half MeV squared. So a minus chi plus a minus one-half MeV squared, well those are going to combine to be an e to the minus chi plus one half MeV squared, which is an h nu over kt when we combine those. So things are going to start clearing up here. We have sigma Fb over sigma Bf times whose Me squared to the three halves. So that'll be an Me cubed. And we had an h squared over here to the three halves. That'll be an h cubed times two g plus the g0, v squared, v to the minus h nu over kt. It's using what we just had in blue over here. And that is equal to 2 me nu squared over c h squared times this ugly factor, 1 minus e to the minus h nu over kt over e to the h nu over kt minus 1. And that leaves us with, if I multiply all of these factors over onto the other side, we get that sigma Fb, which I'll remind you, going from free to bound is a function of velocity, over sigma Bf, going from bound to free is a function of frequency, is equal to, well, when I multiply this e to the minus h nu kt onto this side, it'll become an e to the plus h nu kt, and e to the plus h nu kt times e to the minus h nu kt over here is going to be 1. And this 1 will become an e to the h nu kt. So you'll see that when we multiply this guy over, these factors then cancel. So we end up with g0 over g plus, the degeneracy factors, times h nu over me c v all squared. And this right here is our Milne relation, which says that the cross-section for going from an ionized to bound state as a function of velocity relates to the cross-section going, for going from a bound to a free state, which is a function of the frequency of the photon, nu, is related to the degeneracy factors, and it has a nu squared over v squared scaling. And as I said earlier, we use thermal equilibrium and detailed balance to derive the Milne relation, but these were just peg points. These were calibration points for, for relating these cross-sections to one another. And in general, the Milne relation does not require those assumptions. This Milne relation holds beyond thermal equilibrium. So that's the Milne relation for relating cross-sections when you're dealing with photoionization and collisional recombination.